everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. In the last tutorial, I talked about the basics of masking and how it works. A white mask on a filter means it's at full opacity, like the volume is turned all the way up. A black mask means the filter's effect is invisible, or the volume is turned off. This time, I'm going to dig a little deeper into masking and talk about a very powerful tool in On One Photo Raw 2018, the masking brush. I'll also talk about how a mask can control various degrees of transparency. So let's get started. I'll open up an image and bring it into effects. I'm going to close down this window real quick. And I'm going to add a tone enhancer. And we'll just crank it up a little bit so it's going to be easy to see. Um, it's pretty good. We don't need to do too much to it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the mask options right here and invert the mask. This will change the mask from pure white, which is 100% of the filter's effect, to black, which is 100% transparency or invisible. Let's take a look at the mask only right now. By clicking view. I have my masking brush selected right here and I can click here that's how I get to it. I'm also going to paint in which will make it white and I'm going to turn the feather off. The feather is actually um, the you can see the small circle and the outer circle. Um, the space in between those represents the softness of the brush. So we're going to turn that off for now, or at least down to zero. That way it'll just be, um, it'll be easier to see. And we're going to make the opacity 100%, which means pure white. So I'm going to draw some blobs here that will represent different transparencies in masking. The first one is going to be pure white, which will mean full opacity. Like that. Then we're going to go to about 70, let's just do 75%. And you will see that this is light gray. And 75% opacity basically means that it's 75% uh, white, or to put it another way, 25% less white. Now this will affect the transparency of the image. We're going to look at that in a second. Next, I'm going to do 50%. And this will mean it's 50% white. So you can see that it's steadily getting darker gray. And we'll do one more at 25%. And that's going to be a dark gray. OK. Now what does all this mean? The one that's pure white is 100% uh, opacity. That means that um, the volume is turned up to the max and the effect will be seen for everything that's on there will be seen. Uh, this one's 75%, so we're reducing the white by 25%, which means that we are bringing down the opacity and uh, like we're turning the volume down a little bit. So there'll be less of the effect. This here is 50% uh, white, which is basically a middle gray. It's somewhere between black and white, so um, the effect will be less and less as we go down here. And as we get to dark gray, it will be the least amount in terms of what the, um, what the filter is showing. So let's just take a look at that um, in the actual picture. Okay, so the tone enhancer basically boosts the brightness of the image. So we can see with the full white here, um, the full white mask, the full effect of the tone enhancer is visible. Um, in this 75% um, white or that light gray uh, in the mask, you can see that it's, uh, the transparency is reduced, so it's getting a little bit darker. Um, and then 50%, you can see that the effect is, again, less. It's, it's only 50% of the actual intensity of the white one. And then we're down to 25% down here. So if I was to do uh, zero on the opacity, then that would be the same as black. And as we uh, learned in the previous lesson, uh, black means it's invisible. So you wouldn't actually see the effect here at all. It would just be the same as not having the effect at all. I'm going to keep saying this as a reminder. When the mask is pure white, 
the full intensity of the filter comes through. When it's at various shades of grey, it's only partially showing through. And when it's black, it doesn't show at all, or the volume is turned off. So I'm going to reset this mask and invert it. So now it's back to black and it's invisible. When you start using masks on your images, you'll find yourself using the masking brush a lot. Instead of having a hard edge brush like I'm using here, you'll most likely be using a soft edge. And this can be controlled with the feather slider up here. I'm going to make it 100% to show you the difference. So now when I'm brushing this in, uh, actually let's make this 100. So now when I'm brushing, brushing the effect in, uh, you can see that it's blending the edges a lot better. And this is a, a typical way that you'd use it. You wouldn't really use it with the hard edges. Um, let me reset that again and invert it. And I will show you the difference with turning the feathering off, which gives it a hard edge. So if I start adding that in, obviously that's not going to work at all. It's really obvious what you're doing. So that's why you would use the feathering. Before we move on, the masking brush has another critical function you'll use often. Just like when I inverted the entire mask earlier by turning it black and made the filter invisible, you can do the same thing selectively with the masking brush. So instead of painting in, we're going to paint out. And we're at 100% and the feathering is at zero. Um, we'll just make that 100%. So remember that the tone enhancer has brightened the image. Okay, so let's just say that the sky is too bright and I want to selectively darken that or at least uh, remove the, the effect. We've got the masking brush set to paint out, which means that it's black. So when I paint on here, you can see that I'm painting out the actual filter. And again, because the uh, edges are soft, uh, it blends in better. So like this. Now, if I was doing this uh, for real, I would be spending a lot more time on this and making it more accurate. But just for the sake of the tutorial, we'll do this quickly. All right, so let's take a look at the actual mask again. And you can see the black, we've painted out the, um, the filter. Where there's black, there is no filter. That is transparent. And then the white um, has the full effect there. So again, looking at the picture, you can see that this uh, I've darkened the sky. So I'm going to reset this again. And we'll invert the effect. Let me show you how I would typically do this in an actual picture. Let's just say that I want to lighten the dark horse and I don't want to touch the rest of the image. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've already set my tone enhancer up to brighten. It is now currently invisible, but I want to make it visible only on the horse. So I will get a small brush and I, the uh, feather, probably bring that down to 50, say and make sure that we're painting in, because remember we're painting in that effect. And I'm gonna paint just in the horse here. Now, again, this is pretty crude, just for the sake of the uh, tutorial. Uh, if I hit X, that will change it to paint out, and I'm just, I've gone way over the horse here. I'm just gonna clean that up a tiny bit. I'm kind of making a mess of this, but you get the idea. Okay, now the horse is a little bit bright, so I can just go to the overall opacity of the enhancer and bring it down. Like that. And if we look at the mask, you can see that I've only... the It's pure white on the horse, so I've only applied it to the horse. And all the black means that the effect is transparent, or you can't see it. Before I go, I want to share a quick tip. For that, I'll go back to Browse. We're all guilty of shoddy housekeeping when it comes to organizing our images. One of the most common things is not changing the original file names the camera created. 
Or maybe you have photos from different shoots, but they have something in common and you want to group them together by giving them a unified name. There's an easy way to batch rename files, so let's take a look at how to do it. First, I will Control A or Command A all the images I want to change the names of right here. And then I will go to Edit and then go to, down to Rename Files and name it something relevant. Um, in this case, I'll just call it Tutorial. And I'm going to say 001, um, and that will um, give an incremental number for all the ones that we change, starting with 001 and ending with however many um, we're changing. Uh, that'll be good up to 999 images. Um, if you've got more than that, uh, then uh, I would do 0001. Um, that will give them all a unique number. So if I hit Apply, you can see that they all have been renamed nice and quick. So that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.